Contact a Family is a UK charity supporting families with disabled children. For this podcast, I spoke to one of their helpline advisors about a benefit called Employment and Support Allowance, or ESA. I've heard the helpline talking about Employment and Support Allowance. When did this come into effect? On the 27th of October 2008, Employment and Support Allowance replaced both incapacity benefit and income support for people who are incapable of work. Initially, ESA will apply only to people who are making a claim for the first time. When is Employment and Support Allowance paid? ESA is paid to people claiming benefits because of sickness or disability. There are two sorts of ESA. One is contribution-based, which is paid to people who've got enough national insurance contributions. There are special rules which are similar to incapacity benefit in youth, which allow young people to get their benefit even though they haven't paid national insurance contributions. There is another sort called income-related employment and support allowance, and this can be paid either in addition to contribution-based ESA to top it up, or paid on its own for someone who wouldn't be able to claim the contribution-based ESA. And is this means-tested? Income-related ESA is means-tested. Can you tell me a little bit about the differences between ESA and incapacity benefit? Many of the rules for ESA are similar to the rules that apply to incapacity benefit and income support. There are some important differences. The biggest difference is with an assumption in the new benefit that there is no such thing as incapable of work. This term is replaced by something called a limited capability for work and a limited capability for work-related activity. And how is this assessed? Again, like in capacity benefit, claiming ESA will mean doing an assessment of capability to work, but the assessment will be stricter and fewer people will be exempt from it. So, for example, under ESA rules, people who are getting the high rate of the care part of disability living allowance will have to go a full medical assessment to get ESA. And these people were exempt from that medical assessment for incapacity benefit. Every new claimant at the beginning of a claim for ESA will start with an assessment phase, which will last 13 weeks, the first 13 weeks of the claim. And during this phase, claimants will be paid a basic allowance, which is, again, similar to the level of job seekers allowance. And the same as job seekers allowance, claimants aged from 16 to 24, they'll get a lower rate of this basic allowance. At the beginning, a statement of fitness for work from your GP will be enough to show that you have a limited capability for work. Sometime during this initial assessment phase, everyone will have to complete a questionnaire about their capacities to do work-related activities. And will people have to attend a medical examination? Most people will have to attend a medical examination. That's when a healthcare professional working on behalf of the Department of Work and Pensions makes an assessment of their specific physical and mental health activity areas. Kind of examples of these areas for physical activities would be walking, standing, sitting, maybe speaking, or if people have problems with continence. There are also mental and cognitive activities which are taken into account. Things like understanding whether someone's behaviour is appropriate to the environment, people's memory capacity or people's capacity to cope with change. When a child reaches 16 years of age, can they claim ESA in their own right? They can. If a young person of 16 claims ESA, their parent or carer will no longer be able to receive child benefit or tax credits or any other benefits for them as part of their family. Parents whose child stays in full-time non-advanced education or some types of training will have a choice until the young person reaches 20 years old. Either they can carry on claiming for their child as part of the family, or their child can claim ESA for themselves as a disabled adult. They will need to weigh up which option is likely to leave their family better off. Please call the helpline for specialist advice if this applies to you. Someone who's 16 or 18 or 20 who claims employment and support allowance doesn't necessarily need to be able to understand the benefit system or be able to be responsible for their own finances. They could make a claim with their parents being their appointee for benefit purposes. Is there a fixed amount to how much ESA is paid? Good question. For the first 13 weeks, everybody gets the same basic allowance, except people under 24 who get a lower personal allowance. After the 13 weeks, the assessment period, everybody moves into the main phase. At this point the amount of ESA paid, that changes. Even for people under 25, the basic amount goes up to the same as everybody else gets. And there's an extra component which we paid at one of two rates, depending on which of two groups a young person falls into. The first group is called the work-related activity group. Sorry for the jargon. People will be assessed as having some prospect of moving into employment with appropriate support and training will fall into that group. They'll be paid an additional work-related activity component of ESA. Some people 
will be assessed as being so severely affected by their illness or disability that they won't be expected to take part in any kind of work-related activity. And they'll be placed into what's called the support group and they'll be paid an additional support group component of ESA. Will claim an ESA impact on any other benefits that you're receiving? It will. There'll be differences between means-tested benefits and non-means-tested benefits and how ESA relates to them. It's quite complicated. People should be advised to phone the helpline to get the detail of their situation. Can you tell me a little more about work-related activity groups? People who are assessed as falling into the work-related activity group, they're going to need to undertake some activities to continue to get ESA. It will involve attending regular work-focused interviews and following an action plan of activities which are aimed at helping the young person move into work. Contact Family has a podcast about work-focused interviews, which you can listen to. What happens if a child is getting incapacity benefit or income support already? Again, good question. If your child is already receiving incapacity benefit or income support, they're going to continue to get those benefits rather than ESA, at least initially. Starting from October 2010, the government intends to start applying the new ESA to young people who are getting their current benefits. And the Department of Work and Pensions, they'll contact claimants when they're going to be changing from incapacity benefit to ask them to take part in the assessment for employment and support allowance. People on incapacity benefit who are assessed as falling into the work-related activity group are likely to have their benefits levels frozen without an annual increase in payments so that they'll come in line eventually with their right ESA payments. How would a person make a claim for ESA? Initially, a claim for ESA would be made by telephone in the Job Centre Plus. In England and Wales and Scotland, there's a free phone number, 0800 055 6688. And the form is filled in in the telephone conversation, and then you'll be sent a copy of the form to check and return to the office. You get together any information that needs to go with the claim at the same time, send it off to the office. Once you've completed the claim, how long does it take before you get a decision? As long as you've given them all the information that they need, they should make a decision within a month. And the benefit should be paid from the day of the first telephone conversation where the information was taken from you. And once a decision's been made, if you're unhappy with that decision, is there an appeals process? There is. You can appeal against most parts of the decision for employment support allowance. There's always a limited period to make an appeal. Basically, it'll be one month from the date of your decision. The time goes very quickly, so if you disagree with the decision that you get from the DWP, you should seek advice and begin action without delay. You phone the helpline for more information about that one. In this podcast, the advisor referred to a free phone number for England, Wales and Scotland. The free phone number available for Northern Ireland is 0800 for help and advice about the benefits that you're entitled to claim, please call our free phone helpline on 0808 808 3555. Our publication, Benefits, Tax Credits and Other Financial Help, provides an overview of the main benefits families can claim. This publication can be downloaded from our website at www.cafamily.org.uk or ordered from the helpline and the number again is 0808 808 3555. This podcast was recorded in May 2010 and all information was accurate at this time. For the most up to date information about the content of this podcast, call the Contact a Family Helpline and speak to one of the advisors.